Hi everyone, this is Zain Khan here and in this video we are going to talk about functions. Functions are basically blocks of code that you can use again and again. So functions are blocks of code that you write once and then they can be reused again and again in different coding programs that you write. One good way to think about functions is you think of functions as being these Lego blocks which have a distinct shape and size and you can use the same Lego block for a number of different uh, builds. So you can make a Lego car out of it, a Lego castle out of it and so forth. The reason that we use functions is that first it saves you a lot of time since you write the code once and you can use it again and again. And the second reason is that it makes writing the code compact. So you don't have to rewrite the same thing again and again. You just call the function and it is automatically going to do the entire thing. So those are the two reasons that you use functions. And you might be thinking that what are functions? You haven't used them ever, right? But that is not correct. We have been using functions all along. There are functions which are already built into MATLAB. You have been using them, you just don't know them formally by name. One such function that you have been using is the plot function. So you have seen this plot function, right? We have used this several times, plot of x against y. So in this, the function name is the plot, since plot is a function, and your x and y are the inputs. So whatever is in the, in the brackets, are your input. So these are called input arguments. So x is an input argument, y is an input argument. So this is a function with the function name plot and it takes two input arguments x and y. Let me run it up real quick. Let's say x is a array of 1 to 50, y is an array of 2 times x and if I write plot x against y and I press enter, I get this nice graph. So you see what is happening is that the people at MacDev have already written this function and when you just call plot, it calls that function, it puts x and y into that function, does all that background uh, processing and stuff and then it provides you with a nice looking plot. Let me uh, show you another function. So let's say this is a matrix that I have, which is a four cross two matrix, four rows, two columns. And now I can use this function transpose pose of z so what this function is going to do is it is going to interchange the rows and columns so here transpose is the name of the function and z is the argument or the input argument i press enter and here we go similarly another built-in function into MacTab is the sum function let's say i have this variable a which is the sum of 1 to 10 numbers and i write sum of a so here we can see that the sum is the name of the pre built pre function into MacTab and A is the input variable. I press enter and I get the answer 55, which is just the sum of all these numbers in the A matrix. Now another function that is built into MacTab is the rand function, which is the random function. What it does is when I press enter, it outputs a random number between 0 and 1. So the function name is rand and you can see that it has no circular brackets. So this does not require any input argument. So I can write rand again and it is going to output another random number between 0 and 1 and so forth. Now I can even use this rand command with an input argument. Let's say if I write rand 3, what happens is it is going to output a 3 cross 3 matrix where all the elements are going to be between 0 and 1. Again, rand 3. Uh, sorry, uh, my bad, rand 3. Rand 3. Let me write rand 3 again. And here you go. So we have seen that this particular function can run without an input argument, it can run with one input argument and it can even run with a couple of input arguments. Let's say I write uh, 2 comma 5. So here the two input arguments are 2 and 5 and when I press enter what it does it, it produces a matrix of the shape 2 cross 5, 2 rows, 5 columns. So all the elements are going to be between 0 and 1. 
I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we are going to write functions on our own. That is going to be pretty cool. So stick around for the next video. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button and stick around for the next video in which we are going to write functions on our own. That is going to be so cool.